Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie with the Beaverton City Library, normally at Murray Shoals, but today I am at home and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite um, silly picture books. So before COVID-19, when the library was still open, I would have families um, regularly come up and ask, what are some great, funny picture books that my kids will enjoy? So I have a pile of 12 books. I hope that we get through all of them. So I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. And I just want to note that all of these are available in the Washington County Cooperative catalog. So you can put them on hold. And some of them are likely available on Libby as an ebook. So definitely look that up if that's something you're interested in. All right. So my first book is called The Book with No Pictures by BJ Novak. And if you don't know this book, you definitely should. And you might think, a book with no pictures? Does it really have no pictures? How is that funny? Well, truly, it does not have any pictures at all. It's just words. However, it makes the reader say really silly things that kids just laugh hysterically over. For example, my only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Book with no pictures, hilarious. Also, you probably know about Mo Willems, and this is my favorite sort of under the radar Mo Willems book. You might know Mo Willems for Knuffle Bunny, or The Pigeon, or Elephant and Piggy, um, but this is not a good idea. It's a really funny one. Um, it's got a fox and a duck, a mother duck, I think. And it has a really wonderful surprise ending um, that I'm not going to spoil, but it's quite hilarious. All right, next we have The Princess and the Pony by Kate Beaton. Um, and this is a really funny one. This girl, she's a princess and she wants a, um, a, a magnificent horse for her birthday. But instead she gets this little pony. Um, and she wants it for a, she wants a big, strong horse that is fit for a warrior princess um, and for this great battle that she would like to win. Um, but she learns that it doesn't always take a big, strong horse to help win the battle. Uh, next is Firefighter Duckies by Frank W. Dormer. And shout out to Paula Miles over at the Hillsboro Library. She um, shared this title with me and it is so silly if your kids like making firefighter noises um, This is a great one and they talk about how they are brave They are strong and they rescue Gorillas and chef hats ah! As well as other very silly things All right, this is one of my favorite favorites. It's called Wolfie the bunny by Aim Dickman and illustrated by Zachariah Ahura. And it's about a family of bunnies who adopt a baby wolf that I think shows up um, on, yes, on their doorstep. And the mother and father bunny are just enamored with this little wolfie, but um, Dot, who's the kiddo, Dot is not so enamored with the wolf. So um, this one's really fun to do with voices. I'm not great with, with doing voices for books, but this one is pretty easy to do. You got your mama voice, your papa voice, and your Dot voice that I usually do. He's going to eat us all up! So this is a great one. And you learn that there are um, bigger, scarier things than wolves out there. All right, the big bed by Bunni Laratan and pictures by Tom Knight. This was a new one for me when I was looking up funny picture books to sort of jog my memory. This one came up. I'd never read it before, but it's about this girl who shares um, a bed with her mom and dad. And um, it's simply not big enough. You probably are um, pretty pretty knowledgeable about that. So she spends the book making a case to her dad about the importance of why she should stay in the bed with mom and how dad, there's a different solution for dad. Um, and it is quite hilarious. The parents think it's hilarious too. 
All right, Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein. So this is a Caldecott honor book and it is just absolutely hilarious. It takes these classic um, fairy tales that, uh, that Chicken's father is reading and Chicken interrupts them. For example, we have Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until the old woman who lived there came out and said, what lovely children, why don't you come inside? And they were just about to follow her when, <gasps> out jumped the little red chicken and she said, don't go in, she's a witch. So Hansel and Gretel didn't, the end. So as you can see, this is a very different ending that, that Chicken is giving us. And it does that repeatedly with Chicken Little and other stories. And also there is a sequel to Interrupting Chicken. All right, one of my all time favorites. Um, most of these books I would say are most appropriate for um, preschool ages and up, but this one is also great for toddlers. Um, so Is Everyone Ready for Fun by Jan Thomas. And this one's just a really silly one where you have these three cows and the chicken and the cows are dancing on chicken sofa and jumping on chicken sofa and chicken gets really, really upset and they all get tired out at the end. Um, so there's lots of action. It's really silly. Jan Thomas, historically, very silly. <sighs> Unicorn thinks he's pretty great by Bob Shea. Bob Shea is fantastic. He also does the um, dinosaur versus bedtime or potty or school or library um, books, but he also has this series because I think this one also has a sequel. So Unicorn thinks he's pretty great. We have Unicorn, we have Goat, and Unicorn, he does think he's pretty great, but he also thinks that Goat is pretty great. Um, and they, short, they sort of go over why each of them are great. Um, and it's really silly. Uh, I will also say um, Bob Shea also does the Ballet Cat series, which I think are early readers, and those were also wonderful. Next is Telephone by Mac Barnett and illustrated by Jen Carice. Um, so if you ever played the game Telephone, this is how that book goes. So you have a lot of birds on a telephone wire, wire and it starts out with, tell Peter, fly home for dinner. And the message passes through and passes through and passes through until finally it says, tell Peter, there's a giant monster lobster named Homer. He smells like socks and he breathes red fire. His eyes blaze like stars and he rides a crocodile that flies and he's coming home to this, he, and he's coming to this wire. Tell Peter to fly, fly far, far away. He's too young to be somebody's dinner. Luckily they're telling Owl, and Owl knows exactly what the message is. Hey Peter, your mom says fly home for dinner. So, great game of telephone with this book. Another one of my absolute favorites is Big Bad Bubble, uh, words by Adam Rubin, pictures by Daniel Selmiri. This one's another under the radar hit um, by the same author who did uh, Dragons Love Tacos and Dragons Love Tacos 2. Um, so this is about monsters who live in a world where they are terrified of bubbles because evidently bubbles are super dangerous. There's even uh, some diagrams of just how dangerous they are. There we go. Bubble facts. Bubbles are sneaky. They travel in packs. <gasps> and summer is the worst time for bubbles. That's when they go into a feeding frenzy. So it's quite silly, um, 